Hey students, this is a lecture on sketching graphs in spherical coordinates. So spherical coordinates are um, a lot more difficult than cylindrical coordinates. So uh, make sure you've already watched my video on sketching graphs in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, with cylindrical coordinates, we just said that the xy plane is basically in polar coordinates, r comma theta, and then z is the height. Now spherical coordinates in this lecture is a lot more complicated because, um, as you can see here, they're in the form rho comma phi comma theta. This um, circle here with a line through it is actually called phi. So this is phi. It's a Greek letter. And I think everyone knows theta, right, from pre-calculus. Um, and so what it is, is rho is the distance from P to the origin. Well, there's another Greek letter that you might not know. So it looks like a P, but this, this symbol right here is called rho. Okay, so it looks like a P, but not exactly, and it's a Greek letter called rho. And anyway, rho is the distance from our point P to the origin. So as you can see, um, it would be, if this is our point P right there, it's how far it is from that point P to the origin. And the reason they're called spherical coordinates is if you have an equation in the form, uh, for example, rho equals four, the graph of that is just gonna be a sphere or a ball of radius four, okay? So they're called spherical coordinates because rho equals whatever is a sphere of that radius. Um, well, more or less, yeah. So that's the basic idea. And then um, phi, this, this symbol here, is the, length, the angle that, um, that line OP makes with the positive z-axis. So again, looking at this picture, phi is actually the angle between the positive z-axis and the line from the origin to our point. So that right there is phi. Okay, and then theta is the only thing that's relatively easy. It's the angle from cylindrical coordinates. So if you look on the x, y uh, plane, theta is still this angle right here. And then R actually shows up there, but R is not part of the cylinder, the spherical coordinates. R does not show up in the formula. So they're in the form rho comma phi comma theta. Now I want you to contrast this with um, cylindrical coordinates. So in cylindrical coordinates, they were in the form R comma theta comma Z. Cylindrical coordinates were a lot easier um, so, uh, so with spherical coordinates, it's a lot more complicated. However, fortunately for our homework, we're only going to be doing two examples, um, that are in spherical coordinates. And, um, we have these formulas here, R, e R equals rho sine of phi, X equals R cosine of theta which is the same as rho sine of phi cosine of theta, z equals rho cosine of phi, and then y equals r sine of theta, which is the same as rho sine of phi sine of theta. These get very complicated looking. Um, we aren't gonna be going into much depth in, in these. We're just gonna be focusing on getting the right picture. Um, okay, and then you have this last one here, which is rho equals the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is the same as the square root of r squared plus z squared. Now you see the r that shows up here? They're talking about the r from cylindrical coordinates, which can be very confusing because there's no r in the spherical coordinates, but they still talk about it in these equations. But remember that r um, is this right here, and it's not actually part of spherical coordinates. Okay. So um, an example will probably help clear up some of these ideas in your head. 
But since rho is the distance from a point P to the origin, the first thing that we're going to see for our graph is how do we graph a sphere in spherical coordinates? It's actually the easiest thing to graph. Okay, so example. Sketch the graph Sketch the graph in spherical coordinates. Or they say, sketch the graph described by the following spherical coordinates in three-dimensional space. Sketch the graph described by the following spherical coordinates. In three-dimensional space, I'll just write 3D space. So this is just the same thing as saying sketch the graph in spherical coordinates. Um, it's just the way they have it worded is more precise. Okay. And when they say 3D space or three-dimensional space, they want you to write your answer um, as a cube. So you draw a cube, just like on my last video in cylindrical coordinates, um, we represent it as a cube. So uh, you'll see what I mean in just a second, but make sure you already watch my other video before you watch this one, because this one is more a little bit more challenging. All right, so we want to sketch a graph defined by rho equals five. And this is in spherical coordinates, and we want to represent it in 3D space, so in x comma y comma z. So remember that spherical coordinates, spherical coordinates means that it's in the form rho comma phi comma theta. Okay, whereas in 3D space, that's in the form x comma y comma z. And uh, just for reference, just for reference from the last video, in case you weren't clear from the last video, um, cylindrical coordinates, are of the form r comma theta comma z okay and so we had some examples of graphing those in the lap in my last video on cylindrical coordinates so go ahead and make sure you watch that um, but anyway uh, here with spherical coordinates that's in the form rho comma phi comma theta um, where rho is the distance from our point P to the origin. Now, if you just look at this picture up here, uh, if rho is the distance from our point P to the origin, and then for our graph here, um, all we have to do is graph rho equals five. This is actually just gonna be a sphere of radius five, okay? Because rho is the distance from the origin to any point on a sphere. So if rho equals five, the graph is gonna be a sphere of radius five. So even though these are quite complicated looking, this is actually very easy to understand, I, I hope. Okay, so sphere of radius five. Okay, and this sphere of radius five is centered at the origin. centered at the origin. Okay. And another way to see why it's a sphere of radius five centered at the origin is if you look at these equations relating spherical coordinates to Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates, 
um, we have rho equals the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this one right here is the one that tells us uh, why it's a sphere. So if I use this equation, rho equals the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We know rho equals the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And here that equals five in this problem. Well, if I square both sides, I get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals five squared. And that's a sphere of radius five centered at the origin, just like I said. So I will go ahead and try to sketch these by hand, but if you watch my last video, you can see that I'm not much of an artist, so my sketches are very rough and, and not, not too pretty to look at. But um, I am gonna go ahead and sketch this. So we got the horizontal axis is going to be our Y axis, and then the axis coming out at us, coming out towards us, is our x axis and then the vertical axis is going to be our z axis now this is the standard way to draw these um, but this is not how they draw them in my math lab so i will go ahead and draw it this standard way for the sketch and then we'll go ahead and take a look at how they do it in my math lab as well. That's not a good line. Let me draw this line one more time. There we go. Okay. So a sphere of radius five just means because it's centered at the origin, the left side of the sphere is gonna be at negative five and the right side is gonna be at positive five. And that's going to be true of all of the axes, okay? So we go from negative 5 to positive 5 here. On the y-axis, we go from negative 5 to positive 5 on the z-axis. And then we go from negative 5 to positive 5 on the x-axis as well. Okay, and I'm sure my drawing will end up terrible, just like they did in the other video, but that's okay. We can still, you know, get the basic idea. I'm trying to draw a circle here. That looks more like an egg. That's okay. We know it's supposed to be a circle. And then um, I'm also gonna draw my little circle that's supposed to be going through the X, Y axis. Okay. So anyway, um, not a great drawing, but it'll do. So on the X axis, the one that's going uh, forward and backwards. Um, this is also five coming out at us, and then back there is negative five. Okay, and this is the this is the standard way to draw these, but then for whatever reason, my math lab is different. So just like with cylindrical coordinates, my math lab uh, draws their graph inside of a cube. Okay, so first you sketch a cube, and then you go ahead and put your cylinder, or your sphere in this case, inside of it. So my math lab is gonna have a cube, which can be difficult to sketch by hand, for me at least. Um, and then, after, you, after you've sketched the cube, you draw your, your sphere inside of it. Okay, and since our sphere goes from negative five to five on every single axis, this is negative five, that's five on the z-axis even, 
Um, we're going to be going from negative five to five on every side of the cube. Okay, so if I zoom in here, this, this uh, line right here in their drawing represents the y-axis. Okay, so this is y. Um, this side down here in their drawing, this side of the cube right here represents the x-axis. And then of course, the vertical axis is the z-axis. Okay, and we, we know in this particular problem, our sphere is gonna start at negative five and end at positive five. And that's gonna be true of all of these. So I'm gonna label the corners of the cube going from negative five to positive five. All right, and then I just go ahead and sketch a sphere on the inside on the inside of my cube. And that was going pretty well until I tried to draw a circle. I am not good at drawing circles for whatever reason, especially on this pad. This drawing pad is difficult for me. But anyway, I think we get the idea. Ooh, that was terrible. Um, I was hoping to draw a circle here, but I don't seem to be in much luck. Okay, that's as good as I'm gonna do. Okay, so there's our sphere of radius five centered at the origin, drawn the way they do in my math lab. And of course, you can also do these on GeoGebra just like I showed you uh, GeoGebra 3D. So you go to uh, GeoGebra 3D on Google. Just type in GeoGebra 3D. And it's the top link. It's www.geogebra.org slash 3D. And then you just go ahead and type in your equation. Just remember your equation has to be in terms of x, y, and z. It can't be in terms of rho, phi, and theta. But since we already did that, we wrote it in the form x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals five squared, which is 25. We can just type that into GeoGebra to get a better graph than we'll ever draw by hand. So x squared um, plus y squared plus z squared equals 25 gives us our sphere or ball of radius 5 centered at the origin. Okay? But we should already know that from, from the last lecture. Okay, so that is rho equals 5, sphere of radius 5 centered at the origin, and in general, if you have rho equals a, where a is some number, that's going to be a sphere of radius a centered at the origin. It doesn't have to be five. It could be six, it could be two. That number on the right side, if it's rho equals that number, that's a sphere of that radius centered at the origin. Okay, and then the other kind of graph that we see in our homework, for example, number two, is going to be um, a little bit harder, but actually not that bad if you know how to do it. Okay, so this one is going to be rho cosine of phi. Rho cosine of phi equals 1. So with this one, we're going to have to go back to um, the list of formulas that I gave you at the beginning of this lecture. So this is straight out of our book. Equations relating spherical coordinates to Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates. We don't care about the cylindrical ones here. Um, we only care about the spherical coordinates. So the ones involving rho, phi, and theta. So we don't want the ones involving r. 
okay? But they're all here, even the ones involving cylindrical coordinates. So you can use this at any point in your homework. If you find any of these more useful than what's written, you're, you're welcome to change coordinates. But the one we want to use here is z equals rho cosine of phi. That's the one we want to use. So the reason we want to use this one is that's how our problem is written. Our problem was written rho cosine of phi, rho cosine of phi equals one. So that rho cosine of phi is just the same as z. Okay, so this is z equals one. And that takes a rather difficult looking equation and simplifies it in a way that's very easy to sketch. All right, because z equals rho cosine of phi, rho cosine of phi equals one is the same as z equals one. And z equals one, just like in my last lecture, if you have something in the form z equals a, that's going to be a horizontal plane that's parallel to the xy plane passing through this point on the z-axis. Okay, so this is going to be a plane passing through z equals 1. So passing through 1 on the z-axis. Okay, and because it's in the form z equals 1, that means it's going to be parallel to the xy plane. Okay, so parallel to the xy plane. So this is just the same idea as the last video that we did, where we had z equals negative 3, and that was a plane parallel to the xy plane passing through negative 3 on the z-axis. Okay, so now the sketching of this is can be frustrating for me, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. But I'm going to kind of rush through this one because we have already done one like this. The tricky part was just converting it into a form where we could actually sketch it. Okay. So as usual, I'm going to do the initial sketch with x coming out at us, y is the horizontal axis, and then z goes up and down. That's the standard way to sketch it, but that's not how they do it on my math lab. And then we just want to draw a plane passing through z equals 1. Okay, passing through z equals 1. So that will look something like, let me do it in red, something like this. Um, let me do that one more time. Okay, so that's a little bit better than the one I drew in the last video. Um, so that's supposed to be the graph there. Of course, on my math lab, they want you to draw it inside of a cube. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So for my math lab, or my lab math, we sketch a cube. And because it's passing through z equals 1, um, for our vertical axis, we're going to want to go from 0 to 2, okay, because 1 is halfway between 0 and 2. So we go ahead and we sketch a cube. Unfortunately, I just made the last video, so I'm able to go through this one, these sketches a bit faster.
okay? And um, so zooming in here, we label just like on the last problem, we label this one up here is the y-axis, this one down here is the x-axis, and then the vertical axis is the z-axis. And z is going to be, well, at least if I were sketching it, I would have z go from 0 to 2. But then looking at my math lab, for whatever reason, they're going from negative 1 to 1. I don't understand why they're doing that, but I guess I better do it the way they do. So they're going from negative 1 to 1 on the z-axis, and they're also going from negative 1 to 1 on the y-axis and the x-axis. But remember, it's going to be multiple choice when you're doing your homework. So you're going to have eight pictures, and only one of them is going to be the correct picture. So just make sure you look at the details of each picture, and then click on the correct one. All right, but for this one, uh, since it's supposed to go through z equals 1, and that's actually the very top of the cube, what we're going to be shading in is the very top of the cube. That's going to be our plane z equals 1. Okay, and they have it shaded in, so I'll just go ahead and um, shade it in as well. Okay, so that is rho cosine of phi equals 1, which is the same as z equals 1. And then for the, um, for the sketches for our homework, that's it. We're not doing anything more difficult. Uh, this is an online class, and um, that's about all we're going to be doing for our sketches. And of course, there are multiple choice, so that shouldn't be too bad. But thank you for watching. I'm sorry my drawings are not better, although I have to say the last one went better than the other ones. Um, so maybe I'm slowly getting the hang of these drawing on this drawing pad. But... Um, once again, you could also do these on GeoGebra. Um, so problem number two, you would just type in z equals one, and then you would get a horizontal plane um, passing through one on the z-axis, which is the vertical axis. But I think you know how to do that. So again, thanks for watching.